So, how to use Bluetooth WD2 scanner? I am assuming that you already have the adapter. If you don't, check my other video on which adapter to buy. Okay, now we are inside the car and as you can see, there is check engine light. I can also show you how to use this Bluetooth adapter to diagnose your check engine and get rid of that afterwards. This adapter goes into your vehicle OBD2 port and that is located for most vehicles under the dashboard on the driver's side. Okay, plug your adapter inside. And the LED indicators will let you know that your OBD system works. It doesn't matter if the engine is running or not, but it is advised to connect with engine off. Now the car is completely turned off and it is impossible to connect to OBD2 system. You need to turn on the ignition on or start up the engine. We will be reading fault codes first, so all we need is ignition turned on. Okay, just one press. Now the ignition is on and we will be able to connect our phone to adapter. Open your OBD2 app. My favorite one is Scar Scanner ELM OBD2. I think it is best free OBD2 app. There is even pro extension for only $5 for lifetime. Works for both Android and iOS. Definitely recommended. Press the connect button. Sometimes you can run into connection issues like I did. How can you solve this? Well, go to settings. I think you will not have any trouble and it is because I am switching to a lot of different OBD2 adapters because I have a lot of them. Here is the device name and I have actually have selected the VPIC adapter but I am using OBD Link. So just change it to OBD Link. I will try one more time. And now the connection is successful. I am connected to my vehicle now and we can start diagnosing that check engine light by reading fault codes. It is diagnostic trouble codes option. Car scanner app knows 130 different control modules, but not all of them are in this exact Toyota. This Toyota has around 35 control modules. So I can either read all of them, which will take some time, or just select the systems that I want to scan. Since I have the check engine light, I want to scan my engine control unit. So I will select this OBD2 engine control unit transmission engine 2 transmission 2. Read. Now it will go through those modules and scan for fault codes. Okay, so here are the trouble codes. For example, this PO113 intake air temperature sensor. The other code is marking mass airflow sensor. All of these codes are about air sensors. Okay, so there will be something wrong with either intake air temperature sensor or mass airflow sensor. Now what you can do when you have check engine light, you can try clearing those codes and there are two options. Either the codes can be cleared, which will remove your check engine light and default may or may not come back. Usually when you get your check engine light first, you can delete the codes, just do a screenshot or something about the code, delete it and then wait if it comes back or not. Because sometimes you can even get these random codes which won't even come back after deleting. The second option is that the code cannot be deleted because default is ongoing and it just cannot be erased unless your engine control module do a test and sees that the problem is fixed. I will try clear those codes. Clear only found DTC. Okay. DTC clearing completed. But as you can see, the check engine light is still there, which means we are dealing with static fault, which cannot be erased unless the problem is fixed. What to do now? Well, it's time to look under the hood and check the air temperature sensor. Okay, so this is the engine bay and the diagnostic scanner told us that we have fault with air sensor. So we need to locate our air intake system, which is, here is the engine block, well engine head, under is the engine block and the air is traveling in your engine head. Just find the air filter box and the air is coming through here to the engine and we can already see that we have unplugged connector here and I will be honest I did unplug this so I can create some fault because this car isn't even one year old so obviously there are not many problems with it and I didn't have access to some old vehicle now I created this fault myself to show you how you would go about your diagnostic process Okay, the connector for air sensor is unplugged. Let me plug it in and let's go back to the vehicle to see if something will change when we scan the car. Okay, the check engine light is still here, which is expected. But now when we try to erase fault codes, the check engine light should disappear because the problem is already fixed. Let me scan the systems once again. 
we get the same codes because codes won't just disappear if the codes were there they will stay stored in ECU unless you erase them okay so let me show you now when I erase the codes the check engine light should disappear okay press clear okay and just like that, the check engine light is gone. That was working with OBD2 codes. You now know how to read and clear them. And the even the basic diagnostic scanners, like this cheap $5 app, will offer you a bunch of other diagnostic features. That is the live data. In my opinion, the most useful diagnostic feature to diagnose engine problems. Live data feature can also be used to verify real mileage of your vehicle and determine the history, how it was treated, if the mileage wasn't rolled back. I have own video which feature that. It will be linked somewhere up here. Go check it out if you want. Other diagnostic feature is also risk frame data. So the live data is the data from the car sensors, mostly the engine, the RPM, intake, air temperature and all the sensor data in the engine. And the freeze frame is actually, okay let's say you have some trouble code and the freeze frame actually will show you the live data exactly from that time when the trouble code was stored in your ECU. So you can know that the code was stored when engine temperature was 32 Fahrenheit, the RPM was dead, you get all this data which can also also help you diagnose your faults because now you know at which condition the fault is happening and both the live data and freeze frame data they both require you to have some knowledge but it is definitely worth to put some effort into learning those live data values and how they should operate i also have the video explaining the engine live data basics so if you want to get some understanding about basics of engine live data i also did separate video on that you can check it either up here or it will be in the description and now let me show you the more advanced use of OBD2 scanners. Let's say this coding and service feature. This actually can be used to code new features to your vehicle. Now this won't work for every model. This is called the features are code with ECU coding, which first of all cannot be done with every OBD2 scanner. And even when the scanner can do it, the possibilities of what you can unlock or which new feature you can add depends only on your vehicle because when the vehicle is made for example the Toyota make this Corolla model they decide which options they put into your ECUs so for example option to open windows from your key fob which looks something like this you can open your windows with your key but when I got this car this feature wasn't allowed and I had to use this app to allow that but I could only allow this feature because it was already learned by ECU it just wasn't enabled so your ECU knows this feature but what you do with ECU coding you only enable or disable those features which are already learned in your car model okay and I think I will leave the service procedures for the another video this is your introduction. If you never use these tools, I think this can serve you to understand the basics. If anything is unclear, just let me know in the comments and I will answer your questions.